proper equipment, cut proof gloves. We'll need a 7 16 and a 9 16 open in wrenches. We'll need a 5 16 and a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. We'll need a pair of needle nose pliers and a small screwdriver. We're gonna start by removing your back door, which you should already know how to do. Then we will disconnect the power to our vibratory motor. And then we will release our quick release tabs so that we can drop our chute. Once we get the chute dropped, we will remove it completely from the machine. After we have the chute removed, we can then remove the screen, which will expose the blades and the blade chamber. Remove the screen from the machine completely. And then take a look at your blades. We want to make sure and note the orientation of the blades. The forearm top blade with the serrations on our right hand side. And then the bottom floater blade with the slope up. Now when we take these off, we also want to bring them straight down and set them over off to our table so that we can come straight back in and then up with them. At this point, we will rotate the shaft until we can straighten our cotter pin. Move to the opposite side and pull the cotter pin. Sometimes it's easier to use your fingers as they are small cotter pins. At this point, we will look at our forearm blade, which is the top blade. And if you notice, there is a hole in the middle of the blade. And then we use this as our stop point against the throat of our hopper in order to get a stop for loosening our castle nut. Once we've loosened the castle nut, we must hold our blades up and then draw the castle nut off of the shaft while holding our blades, otherwise the blades will fall. Again, ensuring that we keep the same stack and orientation of the blades. After we have removed the blades, we're gonna look for the six flathead Allen screws that hold the insert in, and we will remove those. After we've removed all six of the flathead screws, we can work this down, slide it over to where you can grab the lip, and then you can pull down, trying to get all the way around as you pull in order to release the insert. We can set this one off to the side, and then we will prepare to insert our metal one. Before we can insert the metal one, we'll need our 7 16 wrench. And you'll have to remove on the back side the bolt just above the V with your 7 16 wrench. Remove that and replace it with the 7 8 length bolts that we've provided. On the other side, we'll be looking straight above the T in the word revolution and we'll be removing this bolt and replacing it with the 7 8 length that we have sent you. After you've replaced those bolts, we can then insert the new metal insert which was provided in your kit. We will start by ensuring that we are clean and clear of debris 
in all areas of the blade chamber before trying to install. Rotate until the main throat hole is in line. And then start a bolt. You may have to take your gloves off at this point to get one started. That's okay because we're not dealing with the blade at this moment. We will put it back on in just a second. Now that we've got that one started, we can go ahead and put our gloves back on just to make sure we're ready for the blades. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the blades, ensuring that we have the same orientation in which we took them off. The best way to get these started is to hold from the center with the entire stack in hand, lining the D in the top shaft to the D in the bottom, in the actual shaft itself, or in the top blade, excuse me, to the D in the, in the shaft itself. Get that somewhat in line. We will go ahead and start our castle nut so that nothing falls. And then you can let everything rest. You can grab a hold of the top blade and then move until you lock in place with the D's that we showed you before. Run your nut the rest of the way up snug, finger tight. And then we will use our screwdriver once again, insert into the hole in the middle of the blade, rotate to the side of the throat of the hopper. We want to tighten and then we want to look. We have to be in line on the castle nut. If we can see here, you can see the hole is only halfway covered or halfway exposed. So we have to go just a little bit further and we always want to go tighter, never looser. So now we can see we've got enough of the hole exposed to where we can insert the cotter pin once again. We want to bend the cotter pin back around to ensure that we do not loosen. After that, we can reinstall our screen. Make sure that your cotter pin wraps around enough where you will not hit the screen or catch in any way. Tighten and then reinstall our shoot.
after the chute has been replaced. We can then plug in power back to our vibe motor. Also ensure that we are tight on our quick release bolts. Put your back panel on and then you are good to run your machine again.